like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners on the land in which we meet today. I'd also like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Um, thank you everyone for joining us. This is the private legal practice focus session at the Law Careers Super Fair today. Um, I'd also like to extend a really, really big thank you to today's sponsor, the College of Law, who have made this event possible. Uh, the College of Law, including all of our other employer partners, will have booths um, that you can jump into and sort of speak with those representatives after the 2.30 mark. So this session should run for the next 30 minutes precisely, and then you can jump into other booths from there. So thank you everyone for joining us. Um, I'll kick off by introducing uh, myself and the fantastic panel that we have with us today. Uh, so my name is Jeremy Frugia. I work with Prosful. We are um, essentially the technology providers for this event, and we power a range of different networks, including Grad Australia um, and a few others. Um, but more importantly, I'd like to introduce the panel that we have with us today. Uh, we have Rachel Cock, who is the Graduate Recruitment Advisor at Herbert Smith Freehills. Welcome, Rachel. We also have uh, Kate Lepontis. Lepontoyas. Sorry if I got that wrong, Kate. Um, who is a HR consultant from Ashurst. In addition to that, we have Kimberly Howe, who is a HR business partner from Cause Chambers West, Westgarth. And we also have Manreet Singh from Allens. A massive welcome to the entire panel. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Thanks for having us. <laughs> I just really want to point out to all of the students coming along, this is a real heavy hitting panel in terms of the top HR representatives from the best law firms in the country. Okay. So this is the place to be, all right? So with that in mind, let's kick us off. What we'll do is I'm gonna ask each of the panelists to introduce themselves and briefly describe to us what it is uh, that your firm does. And so tell us a little bit about your specialization. Rachel? from Herbert Smith Freehills. Would you be able to kick us off, please? Thanks, Jeremy. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Rachel. I am the Grad Recruitment Advisor at HSF. So what that means is I look after the vacation clerkship recruitment process, clerk program, and the grad program for the Sydney office. Um, HSF, um, we are a full service commercial law firm, um, which means that we have sort of a diverse set of practices and we work with clients both domestically and internationally. Um, sorry, you, you told us not to ramble, um, but I feel like I have to do it justice. No, um, that's good. <laughs> we do have 26 offices around the world um, and 5,000 team members. So thanks for having us. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, Rachel. That's great. Um, Kim, would you be able to give us an insight, um, introduce yourself and a little bit more about cause? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm Kim Howe and I am People and Performance Consultant here at Cause Chambers West Garth and I'm based in Sydney and I lead our clerkship and graduate programs here in Sydney. Um, and Cause, we are Australia's leading independent law firm. We're a commercial law firm and our legal services that we provide are across the full spectrum of matters, including major transactions, projects, significant disputes, and we work with both private and government um, clients and clients here domestically and globally also. Fantastic. Thanks for that, Kim. Kate, would you be able to introduce yourself and tell us a bit about Ashurst, please? Yes, thanks, Jeremy. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Kate Lepontois. Jeremy, you were close with that one. <laughs> I tried my best. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Um, I'm the HR consultant uh, for Asher Space in the Brisbane office, and I look after the grad programs and clerkship programs and all of the early careers programs based in Brisbane. I also support my manager down in the Sydney office as well and help out with the Sydney um, early careers programs there as well. Um, Ashurst is an international commercial law firm. Um, our headquarters and our largest office is based in London, um, but we do have 28 offices worldwide and we're looking to expand in the States as well, which is all really exciting at this time. Kind of like uh, Rachel and Kim as well, um, we have a variety of specialty industries ranging from banking and funds, digital economy, energy and resources, infrastructure and real estate. So 
So, yep, we have uh, major clients, both private and public as well there. Um, and yeah, a lot of exciting work and clients um, happening here. Thanks, Jeremy. Fantastic. Thanks, Kate. Then Reese, would you be able to tell us a little bit about yourself and Alan's as well? Sure, thanks Jeremy. Hi everyone, my name is Menry and I'm the National Manager of the Early Careers Team at Allens, uh, based in Melbourne. Um, so my role entails very similar to what the other panellists have already shared in that I manage the Clark and Grad recruitment campaigns and also the clerkship program, graduate induction um, for the Melbourne office specifically and also overseeing the team nationally. Um, and also getting involved in attraction and branding, so events exactly like this. Um, and working with universities as well to really get our name out there and, um, and help students uh, commence their legal careers and also some strategic projects as well. In terms of who we are as a firm, Allens is a full service corporate law firm. Um, so we also have a wide range of practices. Being a commercial law firm, I won't rattle off the practice groups because they, they are all very similar, if not the same as what the others have already said. Um, furthermore, however, Allens is a leading international law firm, uh, we do have a global network of 40 offices. Has uh, Manreet cut out for anyone else? Yeah? Okay. All right. Manreet, we might come back to you. Sorry, just cut out for a moment. So what we'll do is uh, we'll move on to the next question and then we'll cycle back. Okay. Um, or are you coming back now? I think I can see some movement. Memreach, can you hear me? Sorry, yeah. you are, uh, all right, we're, we're back on. Sorry to cut you off, just wanted to make sure we're all good. <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah, classic tech issues, apologies. Um, I don't know if you caught the end of that, but I think I've rattled off enough. Okay, all good, no worries. Well, look, we'll come back and there's gonna be more opportunity to go into more detail. So appreciate you sharing that, Memreach. Um, From here, We'll move on to the next question. So what is the most important piece of advice you'd give to students applying to work at a law firm like yours? Now, what I'd like to do is I'll first pose this question to Kim from Cause. Kim, would you be able to give us um, a piece of advice for law students looking to apply for Cause? Yeah, um, I guess looking to apply for Cause and looking to apply for, I guess, um, firms in the private law sector I think it's most important to be really passionate about what it is that you do and play to your strengths um, and if you don't know what area of law you want to work in from the outset that's okay but you just need to be open to opportunities and showing enthusiasm as well. Fantastic thanks Kim. Uh, from there Kate would you be able to give us an insight into what the most important piece of advice you'd give to a student applying for Ashurst? Thanks, Jeremy. Um, lots of different advice. Uh, I feel like we all probably give out to students um, every day, so I'll just stick to one. But um, I think for students looking to apply to the com a commercial law firm in this industry, it's really important that you're able to kind of demonstrate your commercial understanding um, and kind of demonstrate that you have, you know, an idea of what our clients might be looking for and how kind of the firm operates and works and works together across teams and everything um, with that. So we don't expect anyone to be perfect or have, you know, years and years of experience. We understand your students. Um, you probably have very limited work experience as well. But if you are applying um, to a commercial law firm, it's probably important that you can demonstrate a little bit of commercial understanding and also just that genuine interest to work in a commercial industry as well. So, Fantastic. Thanks, Kate. Then, Reach, would you be able to give us an insight into some advice you'd give to students looking to apply to Alan? Sure. My yeah. piece of advice would be to... Sorry. Sorry, Rachel. Uh, sorry, please continue, Man, Reach. Sorry. Um, my piece of advice would just to be authentic and genuine um, because we can see this translate through to your application as well. So don't try to fit into a certain mould that you think you need to conform to. Um, we are really looking for that uniqueness um, and that authenticity come through. That's great. Thanks, Man Reed. Rachel, would you like to give us some advice about Herbert Smith Freehills in terms of applying? Sure. Uh, I think Kim, Kate and Manreet put it really well. Um, I think I'd probably add to that is 
when if you're applying for a commercial law firm you, you have to think about okay the services that we're providing you're essentially providing sort of business solutions for your clients um, with a legal lens so really thinking about demonstrating empathy and commerciality together um, because you are dealing with people at the end of the day and so when you're doing dealing with people and clients I guess you have to be able to relate to how they're feeling and sort of the context that they're working with um, so when it comes to the application you want to think about um, how you've been able to display those skills in other environments and it sort of makes it really easy for the recruiter or the interviewer to see sort of those direct transferable skills. Amazing, thank you Rachel. From here uh, we're going to ask our panelists what is your organization looking for specifically in an application and what do students need to show to progress to the next round? So first I'll pose this question to Kate from Ashes. Do you able to give us an insight as to what you're looking for in an application? Yep. Thank you. Uh, we look for many things, um, but one thing that comes to mind um, is really what we look for is just a well-rounded candidate. So um, we don't necessarily look for those with, you know, straight sevens or um, top, you know, perfect marks across the board. Um, I should say straight sevens, different grading system in every state. Um, so perfect grades and no work experience. You know, we want a little bit of both. We want a focus on your academics um, as well as getting some work experience some volunteer experience, getting involved in some extracurricular. So, um, you know, but make sure that everything's genuine to your interests. We don't want students, you know, just signing up for things for the sake of filling out their resume. Um, we just want to see, your interests come through. We want to really get a good picture of who you are um, and kind of that well-roundedness. So um, yeah, we love to see a bit of work experience on there. Um, legal work experience is definitely not required. Um, just any work experience that kind of demonstrates, you know, you have experience working with other people, working in a teams, dealing with difficult clients or customers or conversations. You know, I love to see McDonald's on um, <laughs> students' resumes, because um, I can only imagine the customers you get through there and the um, types of problems you had to solve and think quickly on your feet. Um, so yeah, kind of just that well-roundedness um, at the initial application stage is what we really look for, which I know is much easier said than done. <laughs> <laughs> Great point, thank you, Kate. Uh, from there, Menreet, would you be able to give us an insight into what Alan's is looking for in an application? Sure. Um, so I agree with Kate and just another one that's easier said than done um, are commercially minded candidates. Um, and I know that's, you know, a bit of a buzzword, um, but I guess ways to demonstrate that is just staying abreast to issues that are happening locally, globally, economically as well. Um, and what this means for the firm that you're applying for. And also how does this align with your goals and your passion area? And I think that will then help in my previous point I made around being authentic and being genuine, because that will naturally come through. Um, and I think just really being open-minded minded, sorry, and curious to learn and curious to, um, you know, want to just give things a go because, you know, like Kate said, we don't expect you to know everything just yet. The clerkship is really a way for you to learn that. Um, so yeah, curiosity I think is another important one. Fantastic. Thank you, Minreet. Rachel, do you be able to give us an insight into what HSF is looking for in an application? Yeah, um, so definitely I found a trend of usually the best applications that we see are really focused on students' individual strengths. Um, so when thinking about sort of your applications taking us through a narrative, so it's what experiences you've had that have driven your to develop those skills um, and then interest in commercial law, but don't rule out anything. Mentioning your hobbies and interests, um, if anything, stand out um, to our recruitment partners. And I was speaking to one of them um, just the other day and he recounted back, it was like three years ago, um, his favorite CV was someone included a YouTube link to their uni like hip hop dance crew. And it just shows, you know, that you have other interests outside of the law. Like it's important to, be interested in commercial law, but also what else can you bring to the role, to the team? Um, because again, it's a people business and we're hiring people, not robots. <laughs> I think that's a really good point, Rachel. Something that's um, definitely forgotten here and there. But um, 
That's really valued. Uh, Kim, would you be able to give us an insight into what Cause is looking for in an application? Yeah, I think um, the other panelists have summed it up quite well. And I would concur with Rachel, if you can find some way to personalize your application, that's one way to make it stand out from the rest. Um, but another tip that I would give is kind of taking it back to basics as well. Um, not just me, I'm sure other panelists and all the other firms, we read hundreds and hundreds of applications. And so it's so important just to be succinct, well formatted and written, no spelling or grammar errors and where you can, not just for cause for whichever firm you're applying to, you should tailor your application to that firm and show them that you've done your research and why it is that you've chosen to apply for them. Fantastic, thank you, Kim. That's right. So from here, uh, we're going to ask for students to land a job with your particular firm. What advice would you give them to help them survive and thrive in their first year? And what shouldn't they do? So from here, um, I'm going to ask Manreet to answer this question first, um, if that's okay. Sure, thanks, Jeremy. Um, I think I've probably already answered this in my previous one. Sorry for getting them mixed up. Um, but yeah, just back to the point of having an open mind and being curious, we really want that not only to come through in your application, but once you're on the ground as a clerk or a grad or whatever junior role that you're in. Um, because as I said, you're here to learn and we don't expect you to have all the answers. So that's probably something that you shouldn't do is act like you have the answers um, because you are with us to learn. And it is really important for our candidates, clerks, grads, whatever stage you're at, to make an assessment, um, or probably before you're a grad, to make an assessment of the firm that you're at as well. Um, because it very much is a matter of us getting to know you as much as it is you getting to know the firm that you're interviewing or clerking at. Um, and I guess just last piece of advice from me is to respond to feedback. Um, as I mentioned, you are here to learn. So um, there, there will be feedback along the way as well. Fantastic, thank you, Manreet. Rachel, would you be able to give us an insight into some advice for students to survive and thrive in their first year? Um, everything that Manreet said, um, and also acknowledging transitioning from uni to full-time work can be quite jarring. Um, I know it was quite jarring for me when I started my first role. And I think my advice would be come with, yes, come with a positive attitude, be ready to learn, you know, take on opportunities, but also set yourself up for a great routine. So, um, and to remember to look after yourself. Um, I'm sounding a bit like a PE teacher, but regular exercise, eating well, um, and enough sleep is so important. Um, just when you're feeling your best, you, you perform at your best. So make sure to take care of yourself as well. Thanks for that, Rachel. Um, Kim, I'll pose the same question to you, but if you could focus on what students shouldn't do in their first year, that would be, that would be interesting. They shouldn't do. Um, I would say you shouldn't be afraid to ask questions and ask as many questions of, as possible. Our lawyers want to see you be successful and they're more than happy to provide you with advice and feedback where they can. So um, yeah, don't be afraid as, yeah, we, we said earlier, um, we don't expect you to know anything. We're training you. Um, so yeah, ask, ask questions. That's great. Thank you, Kim. Kate, would you be able to give us an insight um, as to what students should do to survive and thrive and potentially what they shouldn't do at Ashurst? Okay. Um, yeah, so something that you should do definitely, I think, is should and shouldn't in the same regard. Um, I Just get in and build as many relationships with people as you can. Reach out to people in your team. Get to know the lawyers in your team, the senior associates, and everyone you work with. I think in a grad program, it's really important that you have those positive connections and relationships in the firm. I would also say build those strong relationships within your grad cohort. Um, those are going to be the people who carry you through that first year. They're your support network. They're going through the exact same thing you're going through. I was a grad. It's been a while now, but I remember just leaning on the grads um, when things were challenging or I didn't know the answer to something. I would just call them up and ask the question and kind of work through it together. 
Um, so I'd say build those relationships with the people in your team and um, your grad group as well. Take advantage of those opportunities. So something that you shouldn't do is just get in here and try to do everything on your own because you're not going to be successful. Um, everything here is definitely team um, oriented and um, it's a very collaborative environment. So um, you really do need to um, kind of build those relationships and connections um, to be successful and also just help in the whole well-being inside of things as well kind of outside of work too so fantastic thanks for that Kate mm -hmm. so we actually have a um, another question that I have prepared for the panel and uh, while I'm posing this question I'd ask that if any attendees or any students that are on the call at the moment if you have any questions that you'd like to pose to the panel as a whole um, if you could please flood those through in the Q&A section and I'll pick a few of those towards the end if we have a few spare minutes uh, to pose to the panel. Please keep in mind that it's best if they're not like super specific around a particular need and, and they're more like sort of generalized questions. Um, keeping in mind that you can ask those more specific questions in these booths a little bit later on um, after this session. So with that in mind, um, what I'd like to pose, and coming back to you, Rachel, to kick us off again, um, what I'd like to ask is why should students apply for your firm? This is essentially the most imp important aspect um, and something that, you know, I'm sure you get asked all the time, but yeah, feel free to take um, a little bit of time to answer this one. Thanks, Rachel. Um, well, all the, the marketing, I guess, jargon you can find on our website, but um, I'd like to quote one of my 2020 clerks. Um, HSF is less like suits and more like the office in the best possible way. And that's why you should apply for us. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I love that. <laughs> um, all right, cool. Well, uh, Kim? Would you be able to give us an insight into why students should apply for courts? Yeah, sure. Look, um, I think our success, we like to think it's based on the success of our people. And I think we're the full package. We can provide you with an opportunity to work with great people, work on career defining matters from the beginning and opportunities to work and study internationally as well. Fantastic. Thanks for that, Kim. Kate, would you be able to give us an insight as to why students should apply to work at Ashurst? Uh, yeah, so um, I'll probably end up quoting someone as well. I remember in one of my first clerkship interviews, I was sitting with a partner who was answering this question um, to the candidate. And uh, what they said was, Ashurst, we take our work and our clients very seriously, but we just, we don't take ourselves too seriously. So we create a culture that's fun and welcoming um, and social, but we also, you know, people here are highly motivated, work really hard um, and really care about delivering quality services um, and dealing with quality clients. So, um, so yeah, that's a fun little Fantastic. quote. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Kate. That's awesome. From there, um, and Reese. Would you be able to give us an insight into why students should apply for Allens? I think we're good. <laughs> um, man, Reed is having some technical difficulties today. So I, I, I am have... here. I'm all so right. sorry. No, that's I'm okay. All... It's all good. For all meetings, I'm going to have tech issues. It just had to be this day when there's like 200 <laughs> people online. And you would think by now I'm used to working. It happens to the best of us, men, Rita. I wouldn't worry about it. I get these tech issues at least once a day. Um, so what we might do while you're just reconnecting is I'm actually just going to answer a few of the questions that have come through in the chat really incredible amount of questions that have come through. Um, and some of these are really interesting. So the first one uh, that's come through is what is the best way to find out about clerkship opportunities that are on offer? Um, first one, I'll just answer that if that's okay. But essentially just jump onto gradaustralia.com.au and you'll see all of the opportunities from all of these amazing law firms as well as a range of other ones. 
uh, that we work with as well. So you're, it's essentially an aggregator of all of the opportunities that are available to you. So if you go to gratishelia.com.au, you'll see all of those available there for you. Um, I believe gra uh, Clark season kicks off at different times throughout the year, uh, depending on which state you're in. So you will need to have a look um, at those dates specifically. Generally speaking, it starts in the beginning of June and ends around like late August. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, it varies state to state. So that's um, the first I'd like to answer. Um, in addition to that, I've had a question in here, um, advice on how to write a standout cover letter. Um, just from my personal experience, I know that, you know, obviously you need to do your research on the firm that you're applying for and make it specific to them and why you're a good suit for them. Is there anyone else on the panel that would like to add to that at all? Yeah, Jeremy, um, yeah, I think that's that's right. You need to um, tailor it to the firm and I think try and tailor it personally as well. Um, don't just regurgitate things that you've read off our website. Um, you know, there might be one or two reasons you've applied and you might've found that on the website or you might've found it from speaking to someone at a cruise fair and then you can tailor it back and it gives, gives it that personal aspect and that helps you to stand out from that that big group of a lot that probably have regurgitated things from the website. <laughs> yeah, doing your research. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Kim. Um, I had, there was actually another question that's popped up and I might jump to this one instead. Um, so how will it affect graduate applications if we don't get a clerkship position? This is an interesting one. I'd like to pose that to the panel. Um, if anyone would like to jump on that. That is a tough one. Um, in the past, so I've been with Ashes for just about two and a half years now. Um, and I will say that I, in the Brisbane office and in the other offices as well, most of our clerk, or grad roles were filled directly from clerkship recruitment. Um, so it is probably pretty important that you get a clerkship if you're looking for a grad a grad role and that's just Asher's. Um, other firms are a little different, I know. Um, though at the same time, things do change. You know, we could have an increase in demand for grads and we'll go out to recruit later in the year, um, open market directly for grad program roles and um, different work experience opportunities might lead themselves to, you know, a grad opportunity um, down the track or something like that. It kind of um, sometimes just happen, but that's probably, um, the way we do things. I don't know if anyone else has anything else to add. I know I, it is a tough one. Yeah, this is very specific between firms, but sorry, Kim, you were gonna say yeah, something. Is, no, I was gonna say cause is, I guess, similar to Ashurst in that respect to our clerkships um, in all of our offices. It's our pipeline for our graduate programs, but yeah, occasionally there might be needs. Um, and sometimes we try to fill those needs um, for extra extra support um, with, we might promote a, a paralegal um, that's been working with us in a specific group, they might move into a graduate role. So we'll try and do it internally first. Yeah, and the same for HSF, um, our clerkship uh, pool is our main uh, pipeline into graduate positions um, that we have in the past gone out to market when there was an increase in demand. Um, and we had a number of grads that we hired that didn't complete uh, clerkships previously. Um, it's not like a stain against your name. Um, it really depends on whether you were in the position to apply for a clerkship at the time. Some people were traveling overseas. Um, so def definitely don't count yourself out. Thanks for that. Um, just quickly, um, and Rita sent a message through saying that she's dropped off, but um, they do have a booth starting when everyone else has a booth. So if you'd like to go and ask um, specific questions there, you can jump in. Um, so we do have a couple more minutes and I would like to um, ask a few more questions if we could fit them in. So we might just punch through them. But um, at what point in your law degree can you apply for a clerkship or internship? I thought this one was uh, quite interesting and may not be widely known. Would anyone like to jump onto that? Yep, so for HSF, um, our applications are open to pre-penultimate, penultimate and final year students. Um, we do say penultimate preferred, um, and that's just mainly based on the timing. Ideally, you apply in your 
uh, say second last year, you do the summer clerkship in Sydney, um, you go back to uni for your final year, then you start again as a grad in the following year. Um, but don't, yeah, don't rule yourself out if you're not penultimate. Fantastic. Sorry. Oh, uh, I was just going <laughs> to go, Kate. <laughs> I was just going to say, we're, we're pretty much the same that we focus on our penultimate and final year students. Yes, and cause is the same as well. So what you'll notice is that for many of these top tier law firms, they, they operate in similar ways in terms of some of the intakes, but they're quite different in terms of like their cultures and, and the sort of uh, focus areas that they work on. So um, that's a question that should be posed to all of these um, you know, top tier firms in the booths um, at 2.30 on the dot. So you can sort of continue those conversations in there. Um, so from there, we have so many other questions have just been trying to sort through them, but one of them is any advice on applying and undertaking the first, uh, that first year for those who came into law later in life? Bit of a tricky one. We might only have time for one of us to answer this question. Mature age um, students. Yeah. Do, do you mean, I, I guess, if it's students that are, are, are doing a, a JD or something like that, you'd apply um, generally. JDs are three years, I think. So you'd be applying in your second year of the JD. Fantastic. Thanks for clearing that up, Kim. Um, so in the interest of time, I'd really like to use this moment to just thank all four of you so much for coming on.